Hey guys, Mike Patty with CineSamples here. Boy, it's been a while since I've made one of these videos. Um, and my apologies, it's been a crazy four months. Um, my third kid was born four months ago. And uh, we've been crazy busy at CineSamples. We've got an enormous number of updates that we're going to be inundating you with in the, in the coming weeks and months ahead. And also, we had an incredible session, which I can't talk about just yet. Um, we were at Sony for... Uh, a full two weeks. And also, we went back to Sony and we re-recorded a bunch of new material for Cinebrass Core, Cinebrass Pro, and CineWin. So you're going to have some brand new instruments and, and sample content uh, all for free coming your way. Um, so I will have more info on that coming up. So in this video, I'm going to, instead of boring you with how awesome CineWins is, uh, I thought I'd just talk to you about the basic uh, principles of how to get uh, MIDI sampled woodwinds to sound as real as they can. And I think these, these principles will apply to whatever woodwind library you end up deciding to get, because goodness knows there's a lot of options out there. So for this I did a quick arrangement of a piece from classical literature from the Beethoven Pathétique Sonata. It's uh, his piano sonata. And I did the third movement. So I thought, you know, what better way to really test your woodwind writing ability uh, than to try to mock up a piece of classical music, because that is the most difficult thing to get sounding real uh, with MIDI samples. Uh, film music is easy because it's basically watered down classical music. But if you can get this sounding good, you can pretty much do anything. So. Here we go. Uh, let me just show you. We'll just start with the beginning here. The, Let's start with that beginning part. And I think we'll start with the bassoon and dissect that. Now all of this is just uh, what I played in real quick. I played it in and then I actually just quantized it. But now we're going to go in and sort of tweak this to make it sound as good as it can sound. Um, okay, so first of all, let's just talk about the, the, the overall sound, sonic sound that we want for this. And I thought, well, this is kind of a classical piece and usually this would be on a concert stage or something. So in the Cinewinds uh, interface, I chose the roomy preset, which is just the room mics uh, at Sony. So that puts the woodwinds a little bit further back. And uh, I also add a little bit of reverb to it. And uh, this is a good, uh, this is one of my favorite settings, um, to be honest, because it really sets the woodwinds back into the orchestra. And it's the best option for when you're actually trying to get them to mix realistically uh, in the orchestra. Okay, so um, let's hear the bassoon part. All right, let's dissect that. So all of this stuff is mostly staccato, right? So um, with this library, uh, in order to get staccato, you just pull the velocities down. Um, you play very lightly on the keyboard. That's if you're in this... Uh, you know, velocity map mode. So all of these short stuff, I have just really low velocity. And then for the end of the phrase, for this, this note, I pulled it up to the, the half note short, which is the velocity. Oh, that's what this little line represents. At least I'm a digital performer here. Um, but all sequencers have this sort of thing. but we can also, if you wanted it short, you just bring this down, you can have, right? Or you can have it sort of like a medium length by moving it to uh, this point right here. All right, that's more of a sort of chord note short, and then this is the half note short. Okay, now, that's acceptable to me because it's mostly just an accompanying figure. 
Let's move to the oboe and listen to that by itself. Okay. Now, by the way, this is I'm using the articulations patch. Um, Which is right here. Now let's tweak this here. Let's, uh, I think these two should be short. Let's see how that sounds. That's a, maybe a good option. Um, now let's, let's compare it to. No, I think I like that better. It connects it a little bit. All right. So I haven't really done any changes to that. Uh, it's pretty acceptable to me. Now put them together, and uh, this is what we have. Okay, now see what I did here is this is the long one, so it's a little bit higher than all of these these short ones. This, these two, these two, and these two are the staccatos. So those are down here. Remember, in the mapping mode and velocity map, anything below, if you look here, anything below 79 is going to be the short eighth notes. Okay? And if you want the quarter notes, which is what these are, those have to be in a range from 80 to 114, and that's where those are. And if you want the super long one, the, the short uh, halves, that has to be above 115. Or just, just bring it all the way to the top. And then you get this. Now let's hear how it sounds if it was just, you know, like a standard uh, woodwind patch that's just staccato. This is what it's going to sound like. You know, there's really no life to it. So this is how it is. With All right, and now the bassoon goes on to do some legato stuff. And the piccolo joins him. Let's take a listen to that bassoon part. This is a very hard bassoon part, and frankly, I'm not sure. You need a really good bassoonist to nail this. Um, and that's the other thing. When you're writing for woodwinds, you got to make sure that what you're writing is very idiomatic for the instrument, that it's very playable. Um, because if you're trying to do something that's awkward for the instrument, it's going to sound fake because you're forcing it to, to do something that it's not naturally supposed to do. So let's take a look at the bassoon here. Um, no, I don't want those other instruments. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so in order to get the legato in uh, in Cinewinds, you just hold the pedal down, and that's what I've done here. Now I could go in and tweak all these little start times and stuff um, to really make sure it's good. Well, the other thing you can do is you can select all and just quantize the attacks and the releases. Okay, do that. Make sure that there's nothing that overlaps, okay? And then what you can do, I mean, I'm really, we're getting into tweak mode here, which I don't personally like to do, but uh, sometimes you have to with something as difficult as, as woodwinds. So you have a little bit of overlap there because you want to make sure that the legato aspect is, uh, is engaged in the script. Let's move on to the clarinet here. Okay, so the same thing applies to the clarinet. Let's listen to you alone. I think we're going to do it just like we did with the oboe here. Make these uh, quarter notes short. So bring them up to a value higher than 80. 
right about here. You can see this is the velocity values right over here. Right. Uh, the other thing I thought I'd mention is that with these staccatos, you have uh, you have the, the eighth, the quarter, and the and the half, but you can you can um, shorten and lengthen each one of those, however you want. So I mean, you can have this way over here, but then it overlaps into the next note, which you don't want. So in the script, we have a release trigger, so we'll put it right about there, and it will it will release before it hits the uh, the next note. No, that quite doesn't do it, so. Cool. And then the clarinet takes over here in a sort of an accompaniment mode. So I reduce the uh, mod wheel. Ooh, let's take this note out. That kind of is awkward, isn't it? All right, let's let's listen to the rest of the piece now, right, with everybody. Uh, and then, oh, okay, so the bassoon is still doing the same thing here. Well, that's the piece. I thought now um, we'd talk about the different sort of mic positions that you can choose. Okay, so that's the roomy one. Let's go and just check out the Dennis Sands presets. I'll go through. Now what that full mix is, uh, is just a, uh, a mix of the close and the room together. And then you can also add some surround into it if you want manually. All right, here it is. This is the Cool. So you can hear it has a little bit more of that close mic mixed in. So it has a little more character. Um, and uh, I would definitely use this if. Uh, the woodwinds are, are going to be playing something in sort of a soloistic fashion. Let's listen to, all right, this is the cartoon preset. Now, this is just the spot mic with a little bit of reverb added to it. Now, this is, this spot mic is pretty cool because what it does is it kind of simulates how the instrument would sound if it was just in a small closed room and all you hear is the instrument sort of like an anechoic chamber, so you don't hear any of the Sony uh, stage. Very close sounding. Now here's the ambient preset, so here's how this sounds. Well, that's my demo. I hope this video was helpful. Um, so basically the things you want to keep in mind when you're writing for woodwinds is you want the ability to switch between different lengths of articulations. That's really number one most important thing and you got to be able to do it quickly. Uh, that's how you're going to get realism. So the second thing you want to make sure you have is flexibility with microphone positions because depending on the application on the, on the piece of music that you're writing, you want to have that flexibility. If it's a big orchestra thing, you want to have the room mics. If it's just a close, goofy, cartoony thing, you know, you want to have the close mics, very close mics. And I think if you can, if whatever library you decide to choose, uh, if, if they have those options, I think you'll be good to go. Um, and there's some great options out there. So good luck with your decisions, and thanks for watching.